on United People's TV this week, I've covered the preseason over the last two weeks, actually. I've covered the preseason as much as I possibly could. All the patterns that we've started to see, the changes, the subtle changes under Eric Ten Hag. And I've really enjoyed covering it. But the preseason tour it starts, well, it didn't start today, but the, the team is flying out to Bangkok today. And over the next few weeks, we're going to now start seeing these things and changes in action. And that's exciting. But in this video, I want to focus on one more preseason conversation. And that's after an article came out from David McDonald from The Mirror talking about new rules that Eric Ten Hag has installed at Manchester United to change the mindset of the, and the attitude and the approach of these players. I want to run through this video, all of that in this video with you. So make sure you drop a like on it. If you do enjoy it by the end of it, leave a comment as you always will, no doubt. But Eric Ten Hag, we know full well, he's a disciplinarian. Uh, speaking before he came in, look, Ten Hag will reinstall discipline on and off the pitch, says Eric Steele, and he spent time with him at Utrecht. And we've we've known that he's got that sort of disciplinary side to him. He, he does carry that authority about him, does have the respect alongside it, but I don't want to get on the wrong side of him. That's what it, that's what, <laughs> that's what it looks like anyway. So when this article came out from David McDonald talking about these five strict rules that he's bringing into Manchester United, it caught my eye because... You know, David McDonald is, is not as reliable as the likes of Fabrizio and David Ornstein anymore. Back in the day, he was when Fergie was around. I think some of his sources left the club when Fergie did. But it's such an in-depth article, I think it's worth discussing. What I'm going to do now is run through each of the five points that he raises down here. Talks about Ten Hag and the discipline that he has as a manager. And he says the first one down here is this. Manchester United's players have been told they will be exiled by Eric Ten Hag if he finds any of them are leaking dressing room information, which have been a problem for every boss in the post-Ferguson era. Now, it, the irony doesn't... <laughs> I can't ignore the irony here in the fact that if this whole bit, if this whole thing is being correctly leaked to David McDonald, then someone's already done it and undermined Eric Ten Hag. I won't ignore that straight away. But Richard Arnold was pretty confident when he, when he spoke to uh, the United fans that turned up at the pub. He said, look, We've got rid of the two people we feel were responsible for leaking everything from the dressing room. And that's a massive thing for Eric Ten Hag to have control of. He needs to be able to trust inside that dressing room that what he says and what he does stays there. It's a big, big, it, it's, it's a huge element of trust and loyalty that has to go both ways. No manager has truly had that since Fergie. Players have said one thing to the face of the manager and gone and done something else completely different. For Ten Hag to be successful, he needs to rein that in. So I'm no, I've got no surprise. It, of course, that's going to be number one on the list. And I, absolutely, it should be. The second thing that David McDonald talks about down here, he says, look, Ten Hag has also told Manchester United's players they will be dropped if they are late for training or team meetings, no matter who they are, with reputations counting for nothing. Now, again, the fact that we've got to talk about this stupid sort of stuff is just how far we've fallen as a football club. But you saw reports coming out in the early parts of preseason training that Ten Hag's getting everybody in at 9 a.m. How dare you get anybody in at 9 a.m. for work, Eric? That is outrageous. It's not exactly a draconian measure. It's a, just a necessary measure. In reinstalling discipline at a club that has just forgotten what discipline is. The player power took over. And they did what they want. They did it when they wanted. They probably got days off when they wanted. They went to Dubai for injury rehabilitation when they wanted without asking the club because that's what they could do but not anymore and that it's again it's small it's stupid things but because of how far we've fallen yet i'm not getting excited about these things it's just these sorts of changes are so necessary for success to follow so it's those first two things there about leaks and about players mate it doesn't matter who you are if you're late binned off you have to install that discipline or players will just take the piss as the players have shown over the last few seasons. Now, third on this list I found is quite interesting. United's players have also been told that they are not allowed to drink alcohol during match weeks to ensure they are in peak condition when it comes to playing. Now, in that sense, I know there will probably be some kickback. Because what does it matter what a player does during the week as long as he performs on the pitch? Yeah, cool, as long as they perform on the pitch. But with, this, is, this is the big thing, I think, about that one and also it, with about the diets, which I'll speak about next. Is Cristiano Ronaldo is the perfect example of how to approach things differently. 
yeah, you'll know what this is. This is when uh, he was during the Euros. He moved the two Cokes away. I mean, Coke wasn't exactly happy. Pulled out of the water. Says Agua. Agua. He's confused as to why the Cokes are there. Cristiano Ronaldo is the perfect example of why that rule there, the idea of no alcohol during game weeks, Eric Ten Hag is doing it. When you're on top, Man City right now, Liverpool, you can probably relax a little bit. But as soon as you relax a little bit at the top, you give opportunities for others to come and knock you off that top spot. And if you're where Manchester United are, you have to do everything within your power to get back up there. And that means having a bit more discipline, being a bit more strict than other clubs. It's because of the position we are in that the idea there of banning alcohol would probably not be a necessity. But this is Eric Ten Hag. He, he wants the best possible conditions. And alcohol doesn't help that. So it wouldn't surprise me. And it also wouldn't surprise me if there's a bit of a kickback from some players over that. I'll see how that one goes. But you know what I mean? When, when, you're, when you're at the top, you have the ability to celebrate and sometimes take your foot off the gas if you put it straight on after. But when you're in the position where Manchester United are in, you can't afford to do that. You have to do everything in your power to get yourself up there. And that's what Eric Ten Hag, I think, is trying to install by saying that. Scrolling down here, Ten Hag is said to want the same chefs preparing meals for United's players rather than them employing their own personal catering staff. Uh, he's also overhauled the menu at, at Carrington with fish and veg featuring more prominently than before. When uh, Lukaku went to um, Inter Milan and he lost weight, he goes, honestly, I just started eating fish and vegetables. Who knew that that might be a reason why I'm putting on weight? Come on, mate. Now, you'll remember, rewind here. Remember when uh, David Moyes banned chips? <laughs> he said he tried, to ban it, he tried to ban chips because too many players were overweight. It didn't work out for David Moyes in any way, shape or form. But Eric Ten Hag will have the authority this time. Eric Ten Hag will have some of the discipline to install it into the players. And he's got the respect as well. As I said, these, these sorts of rules, it might, it might almost make me look silly doing a video on them. But we're so far, but 35 points behind City, 34 points behind Liverpool, that these sorts of measures have to be taken. Because if the players aren't doing it seriously, they're, they're, having, they're doing what they want at the weekends, X, Y, Z. It's like, like right now, I'm, I'm, I don't know, eight weeks into a, a training program with a personal trainer. I could go out and get blasted at the weekend if I want, but it would undo the hard work I've done during the week. So I probably won't, not at this moment in time, because I want to reach a certain level of fitness that then I can just chill during the weekends. But to get to that point, to create that change, I have to be disciplined for a period of time. That's what, that's what Ten Hag is trying to bring on to these players. Um, going down here as well, I found this quite, easy, quite interesting. Uh, each, United, each player has a custom-made diet plan drawn up and will have their BMI checked monthly to make sure they are staying in shape. <sighs> Good luck to anybody who's going to sneak in a slice of cake then. I mean, I'm not sure he won't be as disciplined as that. But Eric Ten Hag really is... Yeah, he's trying it. And look, and the thing, look, Tyrell Malassia, right? He's come in. This is his personal trainer down there. He's, this, is, this was an interview that he did with uh, United Norway um, before he came to Manchester United. He said this, In addition to all the mandatory training Malasia conducts with final on a weekly basis, he also, a daily basis, sorry, he also swears by private training classes three times a week with his, with his PT. That's because he wants to be in the best possible shape to take advantage of it. Because if, look, uh, Anthony Langa over here, he's doing his own PT program. And I'm sure there, if there are United players who aren't doing it, then Eric Ten Hag has got examples here of players instilling that discipline, putting all the hard effort in, putting all the work in. Because if he can do it, why can't you? And these sorts of players will probably be used as examples by Eric Ten Hag to prove exactly what he's trying to say because he is trying to change everything at Manchester United. And these rules, right, if we go back over to this article here and we read down here and, and we bring them up on screen, these aren't exactly the ones down there because it doesn't mention anything about being uh, leaking anything. But the idea of not being late, it's fucking basic. Not drinking alcohol in game weeks. If you want to be the best elite athlete in the world, you're not going to do that because there will be someone else who doesn't do that who will therefore take your spot. Simple as that. 
So if you want to be the very, very best, like Ronaldo has been, then you have to commit to it fully. And that's what Ten Hag is wanting and expecting. The idea of the diets coming in. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's slightly harsh, as long as the chefs are like preparing what Ten Hag wants. But he wants that control. He wants that control. And no manager at United has had that control for a long, long time. But I want you to let me know in the comments below. What do you think of these? These ideas. Are you happy about it? Do you think that sort of micromanagement can probably work against him? I'll be interested where you stand on this. But we fly out for the preseason tour today. I'm excited to see us play Liverpool on Tuesday. Saying that, probably going to get pumped. But I'm excited to see the beginnings of the Ten Hag system. The beginnings of the press, the shape that we're playing. I'll be interested to see all that. No doubt you will be too. So make sure you drop a like on the video. I'm going to cover all the preseason in as much depth as I possibly can here on United People's TV. I'm excited about what comes next. But yeah, what do you think about the idea of these new rules by Eric Ten Hag? Do you think they're being made up by David McDonnell? Or do you think there's an element of truth to them? You let me know what you think in the comments below, as you always do.